Hey everybody, happy Sunday. It's America Supermom and I'm on here really quickly uh, to go over our theme for the week. This week's theme is on dreams, okay? So I'm gonna set my little timer here so I can be mindful of 20 minutes, okay? Because our attention span is not like it used to be. Hey Ray, how are you doing? So we're gonna be talking about dreams. So before I get into that, I'm gonna do my scripture, Proverbs 26, verse 11. And it says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly, okay? So this is like, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. This is kind of what we do. So there's times that I am still foolish, okay? I'm still going back doing the same thing. But we're going to be talking about dreams this week and talking about how we can make our dreams reality. So this is one of the things that I really work with my clients on because as we think about it, you know, dreams are nothing but images, maybe thoughts, ideas that we have while we're sleeping, right? So you're asleep, you've got these dreams. Sometimes you get up in the morning, you remember what the dreams were. Sometimes you don't, right? But if we remember our dreams, sometimes we journal them. You know, we put them, uh, put a notebook by our bed and we remember, hey, you know what? I want to remember that dream. Something about it was impactful. I want to pursue that further while I'm awake instead of just something that I'm thinking about when I'm sleeping, right? So they're images, they're ideas that we see while we're sleeping, okay? So that's something I just want you to kind of hold there and um, stop. So optimize your creative mindset. Unleash the power of your imagination. A lot of times dreams are associated with our imagination. So Dr. Sophie Nubani, I'm gonna be doing an interview with her this week on Tuesday 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The only catch is that it's in my group. So the designers for Dream Living, free to everybody. You can come join the group and you'll be able to see that interview. And I'm going to see about having a Q&A session afterwards. So we can kind of talk about, you know, this is a big book. You know, how she managed to start this task and complete it. And the people that she got to collaborate I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Bob Berg, but the go-giver, he actually uh, was a contributor to this book. So lots of people, you know, she uh, had a lot of people come together to talk about the power of imagination. And so this is really what we want to talk about when it comes to dreams. You know, in our subconscious mind, when we're sleeping, we're able to live a life with no limits, so to speak. But it's not until we wake up that we just kind of forget about, you know, those dreams. And then we start living confined to where we're at, thinking about the past, thinking about, you know, where we're working at or, you know, our family, all these different things. And those dreams kind of fall by the wayside. But we're going to be focusing this week on how we can make our dreams come true. So the first thing is that you want to join me for office hours in the morning, right? That's at 730 a.m., to 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we could talk about some of the things that kind of stop you from your dreams, right? But dreams really are just things, you know, we have vision boards that we make. We have all these different things that we do that kind of help us with our dreams. We try to set a deadline, but a lot of us start these dreams, but we just don't finish them. So one of the things that I want to talk about today is that we might have a victim mindset. So this is I know this mindset because I was a product of this. I had a victim mindset when I was struggling with depression. You know, it was always, you know, it's my kid's fault. It's my husband's fault. It's how I grew up. That's the fault. It's my mom and dad got a divorce, all this different stuff. But one of the things about being a victim is that it gives your power away. So if you're blaming other people, other things, circumstances, situations, you don't have any power to change that dynamic, right? But it's when we own the situation, whether we caused it or not, we empower ourselves to change the situation and come up with a different solution. So for example, if I am in a place and I work, 
you know, there for 20 years and they let, let me go and I don't have any employment. I could say, you know what, my situation is bad. You know, I'm not working there anymore. I don't have a job. I could just get up and move, right? Move to a different location and change my situation entirely. So have you ever noticed how people say you need a fresh start? You need to do something different, you know, get a different place so that you can, you know, have a new beginning. And a lot of times that involves moving, going somewhere where people don't know you and all these different things, because that environment helps reprogram your mind quickly and rapidly to begin a new beginning. So the thing about it, just like we talked about in the scripture, a fool keeps doing the same old stuff. So you think about it, you hung around certain people when you worked somewhere. You're not working there anymore, okay? And I'm not saying that they're not good friends, but some of those old habits just will remind you, oh, I'm not working there anymore. I met them, they're working there, I'm not, I'm a loser, whatever the case is, right? You have to create new memories, new ideas, new routines, new strategies in order for you to move past that situation so you may have new friends you may have the same friends but maybe you should eat different places maybe you shouldn't go into this routine of every friday you guys would meet after work and you know have happy hour before you went home maybe you need to come up with a different routine that involves you being a new person starting something new if you still want to be involved in those old situations So it's really being able to take a spin on something new and adding the old to it in a new way if you choose to do so. Otherwise, it might be best just to let the whole thing go, right? And so this is the situation that we have to remember is that we are the ones who are responsible for our dreams. If we don't give them life, how are they going to come to life? You know, you think about it. Most of the dreams are in your head right? It's something that happens while you're sleeping. Nobody else is around. You know, you can tell people about your dreams. Nobody is even going to be able to validate it because this is in your head. This is something you're thinking about. This is something that you're intuitively inspired by yourself. So it's up to you to make these dreams come to pass, right? As you talk about your dreams and as you make them real, other people will begin to build off of that enthusiasm. So if I am to say, you know what, I am really excited about um, starting a TV show. Nobody else has seen a TV show with me in it. However, the more I make it real, the more I talk about it, the more I practice stuff and do certain things, then people begin to see that being real. So one of the things that I tell um, a lot of my clients is that when you have a vision and a vision is different than just a dream because a vision can encompass a lot more things. A vision is more than what you see your own self doing. It's like, man, I see this being a bigger thing than just involving me. It involves me and everybody else that I can think of who would love to be associated with this common goal, for example. So let's say a TV show. So we have Alicia on. Hey, Alicia. She's a singer. So if I say, oh, Alicia, you know what? I have this dream of a TV show. And you could sing. You could do the jingle, you know, for the show, you know, or the show theme song or whatever. So if you have a vision and you include more people, then that dream becomes even more real because you get other people on board that will get that synergy of them walking in what they see themselves doing and providing. And this is how the vision comes to pass. The difference though, with sometimes with our vision is that we have to, a vision is in faith. A vision is something that nobody else can see until you make it real, right? So it's in my head, I might be envisioning a TV show, it doesn't become real until I start talking about it. And then other people are going to be asking for validation of that. Oh, okay, you're going to have a show? Well, where where is it going to be seen at? Is it going to be live stream? Is it going to be on Facebook? You know, they'll start asking you questions. This is what makes it real. But everybody may not understand your vision until you start walking in it. And by that, I mean, if I say that I'm going to have a show, 
there's going to be some people that are going to ask me a million questions. And when I get some of those answers, then they can believe it. There's some people that it doesn't matter how many answers I give them, they're not going to be able to believe it until I start recording or I acquire a videographer or uh, sign in a contract with somebody, then they believe it, right? Then there's other people that won't believe it until the show is airing and debuting, right? Until it's on TV or video or whatever it is, that's when they're going to believe it. So knowing that, you have to recognize that every, every your vision is not for everybody else, right? Your vision is for the people that resonate with the vision and understand the vision. And it's not always just you, but it is going to be other people that will be alongside you. But they may come at different stages of the vision, right? Some people don't understand that you're building a house until they start seeing the frame put up. Other people don't resonate with that until they see you know, the outside is done, right? So all these different things are just an illustration to show that everybody is not going to be at every stage of your vision. And that's okay. As long as you know what your vision is, right? So the challenge this week is as we go into this week, thinking about how can you make your dreams real, right? Normally we have images pictures, movies that are in our head when we're sleeping. So the challenge this week is to make our own movie that we can watch every day when we wake up and before we go to bed. So you're thinking, okay, make my own movie. What does that mean? Okay, so maybe it is a slideshow that you can prepare with some pictures. You can uh, make it an iMovie or whatever, and it could be pictures of things that you are dreaming about. Maybe you're dreaming about getting a new car, maybe um, a certain uh, vacation spot, maybe you're dreaming about uh, a different position on your job, maybe you want to start a new business, uh, maybe you're dreaming about having a family, right? Whatever signifies that, it's no different than a vision board, right? The difference is, is that you're going to make your own movie. You're going to make your own slideshow. You're going to watch it every day when you're awake and see how that moves you forward. So the challenge would be to do something. Now, we could go into a movie about, you know, your vacation. But if you're not ready to take a vac vacation right now, we want to do something that we can accomplish in a week. Okay, so let's say that your dream is to do more income producing activities in your business. Okay, so maybe you want to put a worksheet on there of um, questions that you might ask um, it's some of your clients or something that signifies you making lead generation calls or something that signifies networking, whatever that is, right? You know what your income producing activities are, but you make a, a photo of that of some form and then you create a slideshow out of it. Okay. So you create this slideshow and you watch this every morning, every night. And this is an opportunity for you to see how your dreams keep you in line and focused on where it is that you're headed. So the thing about it when it comes to dreams is that one, they're your dreams. You don't have to share it with anybody. But we have to be conscious of the things that we're doing every day. Remember, I talked about this victim mindset. So if we're a victim blaming everybody, we don't have the power to determine how we want things to end up. So if I want to do more income producing activities because I want to make more money, right? And I'm taking accountability for that. So then I would have to look at my day and figure out how many income producing activities am I doing? If I'm not meeting my goal, it's something I'm doing. I have to take accountability for that. So then as I do my dream video, I have to program myself to think about, okay, this morning I'm going to read, uh, watch my video. And then what am I going to do today that's going to get me closer to accomplishing these dreams in this video? So then I'll ask myself, okay, normally my pattern might have been to roll out of bed, uh, get on Facebook or LinkedIn, answer my little emails. But is that really going to give me time to be doing income producing activities? 
maybe as I begin to start thinking about my dreams and what accountability I have, it might be better for me to do my income producing activities first and then do the other things. Because at the end of the day, this happens to me sometimes, right? You um, have these ideas. I know I do it every day. I, you should see my office. I just went into this thing over the weekend. It's like, you know what? I'm going to clean up. I'm going to go through some of these boxes and I'm just going to get this place organized. After one box, I've got these papers here and there. I've sorted them, but I still don't have it done, right? Because I had all this motivation and enthusiasm, right? And But then here I am still with these papers can't throw them away it's like well I can't throw that away I have to file this and file that but the point is it gets to be more than what you think right we can always say oh I'm so excited I can do it you know but we have a little bit of motivation for a long time exercise right so we're talking about running a marathon but I'm just trying to sprint through this marathon thinking that I can hang and that doesn't work so with that being the case, we want to think about what are some things that we can do first towards our dreams and stay focused and then do the other stuff. Because you can say, oh, I'm just going to be on um, Facebook for about a few minutes and then I'm going to get off. And then before you know it, an hour has passed. So then at the end of the day, you're beating yourself up because it's like, man, I, I know I wasted an hour on Facebook when I could have been calling uh, back some people, following up. I could have been doing some of my administrative tasks or I could have been doing whatever, creating some content. But you spent that hour, then you're beating yourself up. It's a cycle, right? We're back to the dog uh, uh, going to his vomit and the fool that keeps on repeating the same mistakes, right? So I'm saying these things because we have to look in our own situation and say, you know what, where am I falling short, right? Because it's, you can't depend on anybody else. I can't go to my kids and say, you know, you were supposed to help me with my dreams when they don't even know what my dreams are. That's the first thing. Because we're having these dreams in our head and then it's like, well, I don't know if I want to tell anybody because then I don't want to be held accountable because they're going to ask me about the dream. I'm not doing the dream. So we got to get over that, right? Because at the end of the day, whether somebody asks you or not, you still have that inner voice that's like, man, Amanda, now you said you were going to start that insurance business. You know, you said you were going to move forward, right? Or whatever, right? And then you are beating yourself up constantly. So you got to get out of that. You got to think about what am I going to do that's going to move me forward with my dreams, if it's the people that you're around and they're bringing you down, you got to get some other people. Now, everybody, you may not be able to get uh, to let them go, but you can limit the time that you spend with them. You don't have to always go and do these same patterns. You can switch it up, right? You can limit the time you talk to them. You could set a timer just like I do for some of the stuff. It's like, hey, OK, enough of this conversation. I love you. I got to go because I'm moving forward, right? So we got to think about, you know, every time you evolve, other people are evolving at their own pace and that's okay. But if you want to continue to evolve in the things that you want to do, then you're going to have to be proactive and make that work for yourself, right? Everybody is not going to be on the same level. Everybody's not going to understand your vision at the same time. Everybody is not going to be on board with what it is that you're doing and everybody can't see what you see when it comes to you, right? So knowing that, you have to recognize, hey, I got to keep it moving. I can encourage people, but sometimes I might have to distance myself and encourage them from a distance because they're going to affect me moving forward because I can't sit there and hold their hand and then jump off the leg, jump into the water uh, with them holding on to me. Right. You got to let some stuff go, you know, so let it go. Let it go. That frozen song, my kids, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. You got to let it go. All right. So I got like 43 seconds. I hope y'all this made sense to everybody. In the meantime, if you want to share some of your insight, sign up for the podcast. You can be on the podcast and tell me for 30 minutes and the audience some things that you want to share that can help us 
move forward. Uh, I encourage all of you guys to join my group, right? Join the group. We're going to have an interview on Tuesday with an author um, and have a Q&A. So join the group. Now, why, do, why are we getting into groups? I'm going to say this really quickly because I'm about f four seconds out. But do you know how like you're on uh, social media platforms and you're like, well, I wonder if people are seeing what I'm doing and, you know, uh, what is the algorithm for Facebook? And, you know, I'm just confused as to, you know, should I do an ad? Should I not do an ad? Well, Facebook groups are good because you're able to pick your audience. Okay, you're able to pick your audience. So if you're in my group, then I know the people in my group have access to the things that I put on video rather than just going out here, putting it on my timeline, which, you know, that's good, too. But if you put it on your timeline, you don't know who's seeing it. You don't know the algorithm of what's going on. But if you want to know the people that are definitely have access to seeing it, this is why you do it in your group. So that's just a little FYI about that. So this is why a lot of people are like, get in my group and do all this. You know, that's the reason behind it. Because if you're in a group, you know the people who are seeing it and they have access to your videos. And if they're private, then other people don't really have uh, the opportunity to see it, not unless they join the group. And so this is good because once you begin to create your own audience, you don't want other people in your uh uh, having access to your information anyway, right? So certain things I'm just going to start putting in my group because I think it's important for people that have followed me, supported me. It's good for them to be able to have access to my network, people I know, because, you know, you just, you cannot please everybody, right? And you'll find this with your dreams. Everybody's not going to understand your dream. Everybody's not going to, uh, who starts with you is going to finish with you. You got so many different things that could happen, but we're all about being positive. We're about evolving and we want to evolve with the right people that want to evolve, right? So as you level up, there's going to be things that you're going to have to remove yourself away from because you see that it's not serving you. And so that's not anything, no hard feelings about it, but it's about moving up. So in your own situation, you might be thinking, hey, I need to level up. I need to let some people go. There's some things I need to do differently and it's okay. So you need to probably reach out to people who have done that so they can give you some pointers because a lot of times we feel sorry. It's like, man, I don't want them to think I'm thinking this and that. People are going to think that anyway, whether you're doing what they think you should do or whether you're not. So you might as well just level up and be happy and continue to serve those people that are on another level that are aspiring and inspired by the things that you do. So that's just a little... Um, talk about that but again um i am going to be doing this interview on tuesday with dr sophie nubani okay and it's at 4 30 eastern standard time in my group so sign up for the group or just ask to join everybody can join and we can do a q a with her and everything uh in the group so you guys have a wonderful week and remember your dreams need you to make them a reality so begin to get focused about what it is that you're working towards. And the challenge this week is for you to make a movie of your dreams. So if you don't know how to make one, just start off with some slides. It might be a word movie, right? It could be uh, dreams, uh, moving forward. I don't know. Whatever word signifies you leveling up or whatever, right? Get you some slides that you can make on Canva. Canva's free. So you can make a whole bunch of them, put them together. Uh, also on Pinterest, you can create stories. So they're only picture stories, but you put them on there and it's like a slideshow. So you can do that and watch it every day. If you don't have access to it or something, or you have some questions about that, just uh, direct message me. But you can make your stories on Canva. So I think it lets you put up to 20 pictures. So you, you don't have to let everybody see it, but this is just something you could look at every morning and before you go to bed but we're going to do a, a movie for just this week so begin to get focused on what is it that you want to do this week do you want to get up earlier do you want to eat better right do you want to um, limit the time that you spend on social media do you want to have a better 
conversation this week with your kids. Do you want to have a game day? Whatever, right? So put it in your video, your little movie that you're making for yourself. And then we're going to follow up next week. I want you guys to either send me a direct message. Let me know how your week went. But it's about implementing stuff. So I can get on here all day talking about all kinds of stories. I got tons of them with me, my kids, my husband. But that is not going to help us. We have to implement the things that we're talking about. Otherwise, we're just talking. We just want to feel good. And you feel good for what, 30 seconds while you're watching a, a Facebook video? And then you go back to being depressed down and uh, downtrodden, right? We're not doing that. So you guys got to take it to the next level and implement the things that you're doing so you can accomplish it. You can feel better. Then you have something you can share with somebody else. And that just makes the world that much better. So I hope that makes sense for everybody. I want to thank all you guys that are watching. I'm trying to stay focused and appreciate all the feedback and interaction because this is important. Again, I always say, encourage you guys to reach out and network with each other. Um, Alicia is saying it's time to level up. You know, God requires this of us. It's time to come a little higher. Uh, okay, Maddie says, thanks for the confirmation. Um, so I want to thank you guys for your feedback and being vulnerable. You see what I'm saying? We help each other when we come out. You know, it doesn't mean we're not going to make any mistakes. Okay. But we have to hold each other accountable. Amanda says, God gives visions and dreams. It's having faith that those things will come to pass in the right timing. This is true. We have to surrender to what he tells us and keep moving. This is so true. So I think I got everybody's uh, feedback that they said. And I want to thank you guys because it's so easy to get on a video and it's so easy to be in the crowd of a video, but there's something about committing and making a response, adding a comment that takes some courage, right? Because people are like, man, I, I'm, I'm having a, a opinion or I'm stating something, you know, somebody can hold me accountable to that. And that's a good thing. Okay. Because it's about us leveling up. It's about us interacting with each other and letting each other know that, hey, you're not crazy. You're not alone. You know, it is important for us to level up, for us to hold each other accountable, and for us to even learn from the word. The word says it's the fool who keeps making the same mistakes over and over again. So we have to look at ourselves and say, look, this Bible is not for people that don't need God. Okay, it's for all of us. We all need it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have left it, right? So we can learn from this. So I need to say, okay, where am I being foolish? Okay, maybe I'm not eating right. Maybe I'm foolish because I want to lose weight, but I'm eating a full course meal, you know, 20 minutes before I go to bed. Now, see, that don't make sense, right? So I have to look at myself and say, I want to stay for a vacation, but I'm spending all my money every week through Starbucks, McDonald's, or whatever, right? So I'm just using these things as illustrations. But we have to take that accountability, like I said, and think about how we can move forward. So I have definitely gone over my 20 minutes. But I want to thank you guys again for watching. Have a wonderful week. And if you want to get up early in the morning, 7.30, join me for office hours. Uh, I'll be putting the question of the day, uh, posting that in the morning, but it's just an hour for us to get together, have a dialogue, and we could be talking about how we can make our dreams come true this week. So happy videoing, happy um, whatever, if you're doing slides, videos, whatever, would love to hear the feedback this week over how your dreams are coming true. Have a good one. Bye.